section three of the tutorial video will cover the programming instructions for the 3200 NXT controller. So just kind of looking at the front side of the controller here, we have a two line display which has various um, status or indications that we'll go through shortly. You have five buttons starting from the left side. We have our diagnostic button. We have our extra cycle button. We have our shift button down and up arrows. So the purpose of the, the diagnostic button will, you know, allow the operator to view uh, flow rates, to view totalizing uh, flow capacities and hours between the last generations. The extra cycle button um, cues a regeneration or can also move on to the next step during the programming steps. The, the left button here allows the operator to, I guess, select a different character or line uh, when programming the valve and the up and down, of course, can change the values. So step one of the programming section here would be to set the local time. So our local time is right around 12, 15 p.m. So to do so, you use the up and down arrows just to toggle with, with the setting of time. So for example, I wanna increase the time so I can just hold the up arrow for about three or five seconds and that will get you into a, a set time of day uh, section here. So to do so, of course, it's very straightforward. So to set the local, to, to adjust the, the minutes, you know, I can, I can hold the down arrow or up arrow just to toggle with that. If I want to change the hours, I use the shift button to get me to the, the correct, I guess, character I want to modify. So again, our local time is 12.15 and that's what the time has been set at. Now to exit that, I can just press the extra cycle button for one second and that gets me back into, I guess, the home display. So the Fleck 3200 NXT controller has two different types of setting menus. We have our master programming mode and our user programming mode. The master programming mode is a much more uh, sophisticated or customizable programming mode where every parameter of the valve can be set from backwash lengths to different types of outputs and inputs. The user programming mode is a simpler, less sophisticated uh, programming mode where a lot less of the valve settings can be customized. It's really geared towards operators where just certain set points can be modified so they're not really playing around or changing uh, very important set points of the valve controller. So to access the master programming mode, uh, two buttons must be pressed. You have your shift button and the up button. Those must be pressed simultaneously for right around five to seven seconds. And once you enter the master programming mode, um, the first setting uh, will be changing the language. So the default is English. You know, you can toggle through various languages like Spanish or Portuguese and so on. So we will of course keep it set at English and move on to the next step. To move on to the second step, you press the extra cycle button and that pushes the valve into the next setting and saves whatever is, is selected here. So we will select English to save that and move on to the next step. We will press the extra cycle button, which is the button with the four arrows going in a circular fashion. Now, the, the second step will be setting the system type, which basically distinguishes if you have tanks operating in duplex, twin alternating, or triplex. Now, our, our video or tutorial here will only cover system type, which is unit four, which represents a single unit. Again, many different types of system types can be used, you know, from 14 to nine and so on, but we will only cover system four for simplicity. So again, system four is for a single unit, which is what we will be uh, covering our tutorial on. The third step of the master programming mode will be to determine the regeneration type. Uh, many different types of regeneration types exist. For example, we have a time clock delayed, we have a meter immediate if you have a flow meter installed and connected to the controller, if, if you want the regeneration to be queued based on the volume of water treated. And you even and the meter delayed, it's important to note that it will queue the regeneration immediately without a delay. So once that capacity has been exhausted, the regeneration's immediately queued. The third setting uh, type for the regeneration type is a meter delay fixed reserve, where essentially once the capacity of the system has been exhausted based on the calculated capacity and the volume treated, 
uh, you can set a, a, a certain capacity in gallons, for example, like you know 500 gallons. So it'll delay it about 500 gallons until it cues the regeneration. In case you know you have other systems downstream that um, cannot really stop the flow of water, and uh, you know once this capacity has been exhausted. So we will set ours at a time clock delayed because we don't have a flow meter enabled uh, for this part of the tutorial. So for the fourth step of the master programming mode would be setting the valve type. The 3200 NXT controller uh, is installed on many different type of flex valves from a 2850 to a 2750 to a 3900 or a 3150. So for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna keep it set at 2850 because that's just what this valve in particular is. But again, the 3200 controller is used for many different valves and this must be set based on the valve type. The, so once that's been set and configured, uh, we move on to the fifth step, which is uh, setting the regenerate flow. So again, since this is a, a filter and not a softener, we, we assume it is a downflow and that's how this valve has been ordered and configured. So that's very important. Um, so different options exist, but since this is a filter, we'll, we'll set a, uh, keep it set at downflow. The remote signal start setting allows for uh, an, basically an, an input where you can cue a regeneration. For example, if you have a differential pressure switch um, or other types of inputs that uh, you would like to cue regeneration based on, that can be set here. Um, so essentially the, the, re, re, the, the time is how long you want to wait until this regeneration is queued. So for example, if you have a differential pressure switch and you set this at two minutes, once that signal is activated, it, it will wait two minutes and, and basically that signal must be held for two minutes in order for it to cure regeneration. So basically a delay um, for it to actually regard the input. The next step would be to set the display format in US gallons. Again, this can be set in in, in different types, in liters and gallons and so on. So we keep it set as, as default um, and we program all our valves to be set in US gallons. The next step would be to set um, the regeneration days uh, override. Now, since we have, have this set as a time clock, um, we will set, of course, the time it backwards shortly, but this determines how often or how many days are in between each regeneration. So for example, if we have this set at seven days, your backwash will occur essentially once a week. So if, you know, if day number one is Sunday and so on, the seventh day of the week will be the, the regeneration. So of course this can be changed to anything, right? Um, for the sake of this demonstration, we're gonna set it at three. So our valve will backwash every three days. And of course this can be configured based on media type, application, and many other parameters that the operator feels uh, must be taken into account. Uh, the next step would be setting the regeneration time. Again, um, this can be set based on many different parameters just like the, the regeneration day override. Um, if you have more than one system uh, connected together or operating in series, for example, a multimedia filter, a carbon and a green sand, you would wanna stagger these backwash times so these systems never backwash at the same time. So for example, your media filter would be set at 12 a.m., your carbon at 1 a.m., and your green sand at 2 a.m. That's very important, so you have this kind of staggering setup so you're not backwashing three filters at the same time because that would require uh, much larger backwash uh, systems and can possibly not allow a proper backwash to take place. So for our, our setting here, we'll just keep it set at 2 a.m. But again, of course, this can be changed to any time that the user feels is appropriate. The next step would be setting the backwash length or duration. So um, that can be changed, of course, to any setting, but we typically like to set up our filtration systems to be set at 12 minutes of backwash. So the, the valve will reverse the flow for uh, a length of 12 minutes and basically push all that water to the drain. Next would be setting the Brian and Slorens. So since this is a filter valve, this actually must be set at um, zero. So 
cycle to brine and slow rinse must be set at zero. So this will just automatically step, uh, skip this step once uh, the valves in regeneration and essentially totally ignore cycle two. Cycle three would be setting the rapid rinse. This is where the valve is basically doing a forward flush and diverting the water again to drain. So we typically set our filter valves to five minutes um, which we feel is sufficient to displace the complete volume of water in a filter tank, of course, based on the drain line flow control setting. And again, this can be set to any time based on what the user feels appropriate, but we really feel that the five minute setting is, is appropriate. Cycle four, again, is not a setting that's required for uh, a media filter. So similar to cycle two, this can be set to zero minutes. So. We will set this at zero minutes and move on to the next step. Now, something to point out really here is if this is actually set at you know, a particular time, it's essentially just gonna prolong the length of backwash and essentially just have the system offline for a longer period of time, but it's really not gonna be doing anything beneficial in terms of regenerating the system because cycle four would be used for a softener or other types of systems. So we'll set it at zero because that's the correct setting and move on to the next step here. So again, cycle five will also be off because that's gonna be for a, a softener. So as shown here, it, is, uh, it indicates that it is set as off. The next step of the master programming mode would be to enable or disable an auxiliary relay output. Um, the benefit of this is if you have uh, um, auxiliary systems uh, downstream or upstream of this valve or filter, you would want to essentially notify the operator or other control panels like a reverse osmosis system that this valve is going into or this filter is going into regeneration and the other particular system that it relies on it must be shut down so to enable it you know you toggle with the up and down arrow we will enable it and pure aqua enables this on all the systems because we typically connect these or interlock them with reverse osmosis systems and we don't want any dirty water to enter the reverse osmosis systems while this is regenerating so again we enable the auxiliary relay and from there we basically set what time or at what point of the regeneration we want the relay to energize so for example we typically set this at zero minutes so right at the start of the regeneration, it will automatically energize that relay and provide that output we need. Uh, but if, for example, if, if the particular application does not require to be notified or shut down a system, you know, during the backwash cycle, you can change the time, for example, to 12 minutes, and that will only energize the output at the 12 minute mark. But again, Pure Aqua sets these at the zero minute mark, so the, the relay is energized the entire time. Uh, from there, that it's, the next step would be setting the auxiliary relay output end, and that determines when you want the relay to, to de-energize. And again, that is basically the other end of the, the regeneration. So if you're doing, you don't want to be notified when a rinse is in process, you can stop this at 12 minutes and, and, and so on. And that's, this really is set based on application and um, auxiliary systems that are installed. But you know, we, we would set this at um, 17 minutes. And something important to note is if, you know, once this is set at one minute, you can use the down arrow to go from backwards basically. And it does the math automatically where it'll add up the rinse and backwash total times. Since we set those at 12 and five respectively, we have a total time of 17 minutes, which is shown here. And that completes the master programming mode. And once that's done, you will see a little, dis uh, you see this display saying, you know, saving or configuring valve. And once that setting is done, you're back to the home screen where it says the system four, and it says the local time, and it indicates that the regeneration is in three days. So now the second uh, menu here for programming is the user programming mode. Again, as mentioned, it's much simpler. It's about three or four steps. And to access that, uh, the user programming mode, you must hold the down and up arrows five seconds, uh, for five seconds simultaneously. And when that, once that's done, the first setting is setting uh, 
or selecting the language type. Again, you know, you can change that between English, Spanish, or Portuguese, and various other languages. So we'll keep this set in English, and to save that setting, we move forward by pressing the extra cycle button, which is the button with four arrows in a circular uh, fashion here. Press that, that saves, and moves on to the next step. Again, the next setting would be re setting the regeneration day override, which, as mentioned previously, is basically how many days in between each regeneration or backwash. Um, and that can be set based on application and media type. The next setting would be the regeneration time, which as mentioned, um, is what time, the once the regeneration is queued, at what time of that day the regeneration will begin. So as mentioned, if you have various systems connected together in series, you would want to stagger these times so there's no overlap in backwashes. We keep this set at 2 a.m. for the sake of this tutorial, which is acceptable. To move forward, you press the extra cycle button again, and that would complete the setting of the user programming mode and save all those settings. This wraps up our Learning Center video, and we thank you for watching.